Chef Patrick here with another recipe you can trust. Today we're going to do a roast center cut sirloin. The center cut sirloin is a great alternative to a beef tenderloin. It gives you a nice roast flavor. The, the, the sirloin has a great beefy taste to it. So when you, when you roast this thing off, your, your customers are really going to get a good, uh, a good piece of meat there. Uh, and it's not nearly as expensive as a beef tenderloin. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to truss this uh, uh, loin of, of beef here and uh, we're going to tie it with some butcher's twine, sear it off, and I'm going to roast it in the oven on a rack. Uh, while I have that pan here, I want to capture all those drippings, so I'm going to go ahead and get that sauce started that I'm going to serve with it. And we're going to saute some garlic and some shallots and, and do a little uh, red wine reduction and a little brandy in there, and then we're going to add some demi to it and, and get all those flavors going. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, start out by trussing this uh, piece of meat, and I'm going to turn this cast iron uh, skillet on so it can heat up while I'm, while I'm doing this. So there's a number of ways you can do uh, the trussing of a, a piece of meat, but um, I do a, a, a butcher's knot here that uh, just kind of slides down and uh, tightens up. Then once it gets tightened up, I uh, lock it into place with another knot. And then really it's just half hitches. And you run it down and you try and spread it equidistant and pull them tight and then do the next one. Now the reason we're trussing this piece of meat is because we want it to hold its shape when it cooks. And you can see the area that I have trussed already is nice and round and this part is kind of oval. So uh, that's important so that when it, it cooks, it cooks evenly. And uh, when it comes out of the oven, and you go to slice it and put it on the plate, it's got a nice, nice round shape to it. So we'll just keep doing these things all the way down. And that's probably good there. And then when we get to the end, just cut that twine. And we'll tie a knot in the end here. And we're good to go. So you can see how it's got a nice, nice uh, shape to it. So now we're going to take and season this thing up. A little salt and pepper mixture. I like to use just salt and pepper. It really brings out the flavor of the meat. You can put some other things in there, garlic, thyme, rosemary, whatever your preference is. Um, but just a good salt and pepper mix lets the meat shine on its own. So now we've got this pan is, is pretty hot. And I'm going to put a little bit of oil in here. And sear that. So what we're going to do is we're searing the, 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 the roast here. And what's that, what that's going to do is it's going to caramelize the outside of it. And it's going to give you a, a nice caramelization flavor-wise, appearance. And it's also going to lock the juices in. So as that piece of meat roasts in the oven, those juices are going to stay in there. They're not going to escape out. So we want to uh, get a nice color on there. And... Um, and get that going. And like I said, uh, there's a lot of flavors going to be in this pan. And I want to capture all that flavor when, it's, um, when we take the, the piece of meat out and put it in the oven. So uh, that pan's going to be good and hot. And I'm just going to go ahead and get that base sauce done right there when, um, uh, while we have it. And then what I'll do is I'll hold that base sauce. And then I'm going to add a little bit of cream and butter to that sauce at service. And I'll, uh, I'll put that in at the last minute but I don't want to miss the opportunity to catch these flavors. You can see we got a nice roast or sear going there. And that's going to be a good flavor as well as color and functionality on that roast when it goes into the oven.
All right, so let's take this off, put it on a rack, and then we're going to go ahead and stick that in the oven. Okay, so while that's going in the oven, I'm going to get just turn this down a little bit. A little bit more oil in there. Now here's the problem you got to be careful with. It's uh, it's going to start getting too hot because you want it really good and hot to uh, sear that that roast. But you don't want it so hot that it's going to burn up these ingredients for the sauce. I like to put a little mushroom stems in there for flavor. A little rosemary goes in there. You can really smell that. Some garlic, some Dijon mustard. Then I'm going to hit it with a little bit of red wine. Thyme. And then a little bit of brandy. Okay, so that, uh, <laughs> that smells wonderful. I've got here a little bit of uh, uh, some demi-glace. I've got that preheated, so I'm going to pour that right in. Turn that heat back up a little bit now. And I'm going to let these flavors kind of meld a little bit. Then... After this simmers for just a minute or so, I'm going to strain all that stuff out, and we're going to pretty much have a finished sauce, but I, I want to add a little bit of uh, uh, cream to it at the end and, and, and put a little bit of butter in there at the end. So um, I'll do that a la minute, because once that cream and butter goes in there, you really don't want to uh, do too much to, to reheat that sauce. You want to have it ready to go and, and just kind of finalize it. So as we... Let that simmer. I'm going to go ahead now and this is a pretty shallow pan. The flavors get together pretty quickly. It's not too deep of a sauce. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and strain it off now. And I think we're good to go. So I'm going to hold this and um, kind of clean up a little bit and come back and start our vegetable prep while that's in the oven. Okay, so we're back. The roast is in the oven. I've gone ahead and changed out the station here, got rid of the cutting board with the raw meat on it. I've got a, a nice clean cutting board here for vegetables. Now I'm going to go ahead and start the vegetable prep. I'm going to serve green beans, sauteed carrots, and some sauteed mushrooms with this dish. So the first thing I'm going to do, I've got uh, some boiling salted water here. I'm going to go ahead and take these green beans and cut the ends off. And uh, I'm going to blanch these green beans in the boiling water. And whenever you cook a green vegetable, you want to make sure that you're um, doing it in plenty of uh, rapidly boiling water with a lid off because as it cooks, there's gases that are in there that need to escape, and if the lid's on there, they stay in there, and then the vegetables um, uh, turn an olive drab color. So, so we're gonna put it in that, that uh, salted water and let that cook, uh, and then we're gonna shock it in the ice bath and lock that flavor in. So while the green beans are cooking here, 
I'm going to uh, cut the rest of these carrots. This is what's called an oblique cut, and it's uh, just a, or they also call it a roll cut. Cut an angle like that, and then you roll the carrot, and you just keep the knife at the same angle, but you just keep rolling the carrot. Or you can take it and uh, cut it that way, and then that way, whatever you're more comfortable with, whatever goes fastest for you. As the carrot gets a little bit thicker, you can see the difference between the thickness here and here. So you make those, those rolls a little bit less of, a, of an angle, or a sharper angle, actually. Uh, and then what you can do is you get down to the end here, you cut it like that, and then just uh, make your cuts here. The, the, the concept on these vegetable cuts is you want to have pieces of vegetables that are similar in size so that when they cook, they all cook at the same time. If you have real big pieces, they're going to be underdone when the small pieces are, are, are done or vice versa. So these green beans are just about there. I'm going to take those out and shock them. Set that in here. I like these little baskets because it makes it a lot easier to not fish them out through the ice cubes and all that kind of stuff. So I'm uh, just, just shock it enough to, to stop the cooking there. And then I'm going to put them back into this container. Put that back in the water. And then we're going to dump the carrots in. So if you're doing small batches like this, you can use the same water to cook the two vegetables, but, but definitely make sure that you're um, doing the green vegetables before the carrots. So now for the mushrooms, I'm going to get those ready. And uh, I'm just going to quarter these mushrooms. I've already taken the stems off, just cut them straight. And um, I'm going to quarter these. And what we're going to do is we're just going to saute these with a little bit of um, shallots and garlic and some butter. Whenever you cook mushrooms, they're about 80% water. So you're going to get a lot of water that comes off of these mushrooms in the cooking process. A lot of people have a tendency to take those, that water and drain it off. And you don't want to do that because all the flavor is in that water. So as that water releases out of the mushrooms, just keep cooking them and let that uh, water evaporate and all that flavor intensifies and uh, coats those mushrooms. And that's where you really get that good flavor. So I'm going to get this pan a little bit hot. These uh, carrots still need a little bit longer. I'm going to test them by... Yep, yeah, a little bit, not quite. And um, we do a little combination of butter and oil. Reason for that is to uh, get a little higher temperature so the butter doesn't burn up on you. Okay, so uh, things are going to kind of get going pretty quickly here in a little bit. I'm going to put these mushrooms in. Let that get going while this is... And I want to saute these mushrooms and get them to start releasing the water. And after that goes, then I'm going to put a little bit of garlic and shallots in. Sometimes if you put the garlic and shallots in too soon, that starts to burn uh, before the mushrooms really start to kind of render down. Uh, but we want to make sure that that flavor comes out. So let's check these. just a little bit longer. Okay. 
I'll go ahead and put a little bit of this in here. We're getting some of that liquid coming out already. Mushrooms are one of my favorite things to cook and eat. I think they've got a great umami flavor comes out of them and uh, this should be ready to go. They add a lot of dimension to things also. Uh, like I said, I uh, yeah, these are good to go. I, I like to put some mushroom stems in the, uh, in, the, in the sauce that I made there. That helps really round out the flavor. I'm going to just move this off the heat. And then I'm going to move this up here. It's a little bit of a larger burner. Let those uh, really get going. So in just a few minutes here, uh, we're going to have these mushrooms done. Uh, the, the green beans are blanched and shocked. The carrots are blanched and shocked. And um, once, uh, once we got that ready, then I'm going to kind of clean up again. I'm going to transition into the plate up section. I'm going to check the roast and see that it's um, how it's coming along. And uh, so it's been in about uh, 25 minutes so far. You can see we got a nice, nice, great color in these vegetables from shocking them like that. That locks it in. So now we're starting to get a little caramelization on these mushrooms. We've got, uh, I'm going to hit it with a little bit of salt and pepper. Again, like I say, mushrooms are about 80% water and they're also pretty much like sponges. So as you cook these things, they're going to soak up whatever flavor that you put in there and um, I'm going to hit it with a little bit of that demi glace that I started also uh, and I'm going to get a little bit of red wine reduction in there to, to really get some good good flavors in here. Okay, so um, I think that's in good shape. I'm going to hit a little bit of red wine. And then we're going to let that reduce down. Boy. It's going to be wonderful. And just a couple of ounces of this, uh, about an ounce and a half that demi glass that we had going. We're going to let that simmer just a little bit. Um, and we'll uh, actually finish just a couple of knobs of butter in there. Okay, so uh, I'm going to take a pause here for just a minute, and uh, I'm going to kind of clean up and get, get into uh, plate-up mode, get some of this stuff out of the way. Uh, we're going to check the roast at that point, and um, we'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. I've uh, cleaned up and uh, gotten transitioned into the plate-up service. 
One thing I want to just point out before I left, I, I saw the mushrooms going. They were done. I just uh, poured them into a pan over here so that they're uh, uh, out of the way and, and off the stove. So now we're going to go ahead and pull the uh, roast out of the oven and check the temperature of that. should be just about done. It uh, has been in there for about 25 minutes. It's a small roast. So um, we're going to check the temperature um, and uh, see where we're at. So the thing is, is you want to pull it out at about uh, 118 to 120, something in that range. The carryover cooking is going to take it up to about 130, 135. Uh, so we're right there. It's uh, perfect temperature. And um, so now I'm going to take this thing. Another trick is after it comes out of the oven, I like to take it and just turn it upside down as it rests. And the reason for that is that, um, you know, those juices have a tendency to kind of settle as it's cooking. So uh, these, this way they can kind of settle back in. You can see that every now and again. I'm going to put this right over here and let it rest there. You can see that every now and again when somebody does a roast or something. And they've got a little bit of a gray line, or grayer on top and, and redder on the bottom. That's because they just pulled it out and let it rest like that instead of turning it over. So while that's uh, resting, we're going to get our vegetables started here. Got a um, saute pan here. I'm going to heat up and uh, start with some butter. Oh, that's pretty hot. So for the vegetables, I like to add a little bit of shallots in there. And then we're going to add the carrots in. And I'm going to I'm going to do the uh, green beans in there as well because uh, in this case, the, the green beans are already cooked and all we're really doing is heating them up. So uh, you can see there's a nice uh, look there with the shallots with a little salt and pepper. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of chopped parsley. that a little bit and then I'll hit it with just a little bit of white wine sometimes you can do chicken stock something like that it, it just uh, kind of helps coat and glaze the vegetables a little bit gives them a really good flavor so while that's going there I'm gonna move this um, sauce over here again start getting that hot or it's already hot. Actually, I'm going to use that hot burner. Leave these set here. But I'm just going to, um, like I said, I wanted to finish this with a little bit of butter. A la minute. A couple of knobs of butter in there. And then I'm going to... Uh, Put that butter in there, that gives it a nice sheen, it gives it a nice mouthfeel, uh, silkiness to it. And then we're going to finish with a little bit of heavy cream, just to lighten this up a bit. So now once you got that butter mounted in there, and you've got the uh, heavy cream in there, you got to be careful. You don't ever want it to come to a boil because then it'll break on you. That will not be good. So we got that going. So um, now I'm going to go ahead and take this uh, roast. I'm going to move it over here. 
cut these strings off. I want it to rest just a little bit longer, but I can take these strings off. Very nice. Got my slicer over here. So we'll let that rest. Vegetables are good. Okay, so uh, also I'm going to serve with this. The potato is a, 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 a potato dauphinois that I made in a previous video. I've got that video there so you can check it out. I'll show you the process of how to make that. Um, that's heating up in the oven. So I'm going to bring that on out and then we'll um, start putting this plate together. So this potato dauphinois is uh, thinly sliced potatoes with a little bit of a custard in there. I've got a mixture of, of um, sweet potato and uh, russet potato. So it gives it a little bit of color there. You can do it with all russet potatoes or whatever you'd like, but um, Thought it would be nice to and uh, this is done the day before at least a day before and um, then uh, chilled in the refrigerator so that it can uh, be taken out of the pan that it's cooked in and it'll firm up and then you can slice it into whatever shape you want and then put it on the plate. Heat it up in the oven and then serve it uh, how you'd like. Okay, so uh, we're going to get some of this out of the plate. Move this plate up here and uh, start slicing this rascal. So the moment of truth. Oh, look at that, huh? This is a relatively small roast, so we're going to give three slices. And uh, I'm going to start out by Putting these green beans up here. These carrots right there. You can see that you've got a lot of flavors in that. You look at that, it's seasoned. There's parsley there, there's, there's shallots in there. That's what you're looking for. You want to make sure that um, people are able to uh, see something that looks appealing and uh, looks like it's flavorful. And then I'm going to take these uh, medallions of beef and just set them right there. Put a spoonful of the mushrooms right here. And then on a roasted piece of meat like this that's sliced, you don't want to cover it with sauce. You want to put sauce in front of it. So it's on the plate, but it's not covering that nice roasted meat. Move that out of the way. Then I'm going to move it up to the front and we'll get a, a nice shot of it when it's done. So that's your uh, roast uh, 
center cut uh, sirloin.